enthusiasts, you asked for it, we delivered. You wanted 10 questions with Albert Bierman. Here they come. Girl, I got questions. Girl, I got questions. Albert, what was your most memorable moment working on the development of N? And if you could change one thing, what would it be? Yeah, there were many, many challenges in our first N car development, like developing an ELSD, limited slip differential, uh, fight with the power under steer and so on. And yeah, I always wish we could have a, maybe a little bit more powerful engine, but so at some point we decided, oh, maybe power is not the most meaningful thing. It should have good response, good linearity. And so, and with a the facelift, then also we added some power and some more response and high end uh, refs, so we, we fixed that one and yeah, that was there was so many challenges to go through, but nowadays uh, I think we, we think oh, it was all piece of cake. <laughs> with the future heading towards electric vehicles, how does N plan to continue delivering emotion to the driving experience, such as the pops and bangs? Yeah, we are working still hard on the pops and bangs for the Ionic 5N, which will be our first uh, EV, high performance N car. So we give a first idea about what people can expect from uh, Ionic 5N with the RN22 rolling lap car. So outside speaker sound, very strong, virtual gear shifts, vibrations. So this is what we try we, we cannot make that sound what we just heard but we try to get close to it and sitting in the car is the game because the emission regulations will restrict a lot the out the outside sound so we, for the driver experience we try to come very close to the i30 and dct driving experience How many people were on the engineering team and which car is your favorite N and why? Yeah, so when we started, we had about 110, 120 people in Namyang, all kind of different engineering people. And in, in Germany, in HMETC, European Tech Center in Rüsselsheim, there was nobody there. So, uh, but I had uh, contact with two freelancers and then I started hiring more and more people. Nowadays we have, I don't know, maybe 25 people in HMETC and they work very intensely with Namyang. So, and uh, that was very challenging to the, bring these cultures together. But the good thing is we had the I30N and there was a project line for I30N, what has to be achieved at a certain moment of time. And that made a nice pressure to bond these this two different uh, cultures of engineering together. And then nowadays uh, we have a, a good rhythm, a good routine of collaboration between uh, HMETC guys, the N guys over there, and the N guys in Namyang. Uh, we have no extra organization anymore for N. In the beginning we had an, an N center, high performance vehicle center in Namyang. And also we had a separate organization in HMETC, but nowadays we integrated them in, in bigger organizations, but the key guys are still there and the network of, of N guys uh, is, is still alive. But now with electrification, it has to grow because we need different engineers joining the N team. And this is a nice new challenge to bring new engineers to the N family and make this crazy N cars. Yeah. Does Hyundai see the potential use of synthetic fuels to keep internal combustion engines alive or do you envisage a future with only EVs? Mm, I think we do not envision the future with only EVs. We, we, we always said hydrogen will also have its place in the future. Uh, on what kind of cars, that is still the big question to, to answer. But we are already running hydrogen trucks We're in the Switzerland fleets. Now we're expanding the fleet operation into Germany. So we will, and we work also, of course, now on burning hydrogen in a combustion engine, but that is not the main route we are following for the future. Uh, it can survive in some niche area, maybe, 
but not in the mainstream. So uh, mainstream in passenger car, especially small passenger cars, we can anticipate is, is EV. But then when the cars get bigger, bigger SUVs, bigger pickup trucks, or uh, commercial cars, then hydrogen can easily play a role in the future because hydrogen will be available in huge amount if we want to make carbon neutral by 2050. Was the torsion beam suspension in the i20N a compromise and would you have preferred a multi-link setup? Mm, no. It's a whole new torsion beam rear axle on i20N. It was, a, I would think, the biggest challenge to yeah, find the funding, to make this decision and spend all the efforts to make a whole new torsion beam rear axle. But it helped so much to be this fun machine and so it was all the right decisions and it was worth spending every little penny on it uh, because this makes the whole deal uh, in the driving fun of i20N with the, the new stiffer torsion beam rear axle. So it, 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 works, it works nice in the i20N. Will the RN22E become a production car? The way you see the RN22 today is probably not see production, but uh, there's a good chance we will see an Ionic 6N in the future. Maybe not with this white body, but we might need to exchange fenders for reasonable tire sizes. So how much, how close we can come to RN22 future will tell, but it will take some time. So uh, we're not rushing into this. Uh, so, but there's a good chance Ionic 6 and can come. And yeah, it could be close, but we, we might not have such a wide rear wing, right? So that's not, not, not reasonable on a road car, but uh, yeah, let's see. Will there be a new generation i30N with an internal combustion engine? Yeah, for Korea, I can, uh, for Australia, I can say yes. For Korea, I can say yes. <laughs> so uh, it's in the planning. Uh, it's not maybe the i30N uh, what was the first end car, but here in Australia, you also have an i30N sedan, right? So the i30N can live on in, in Australia. In Korea, the, there is no i30N sedan, right? So maybe it cannot continue in Korea, but in Australia, since you have an i30N sedan, which was a very smart move to call it like that and not call it Elantra or something. So yeah, it can live on. <laughs> when you came to Hyundai, you clearly had a plan. Did you achieve your goals as head of the N brand? Yeah, I mean, when I come here to the Honda N Festival in Australia and I visited similar events in, in Germany or US, uh, in Korea. So, yeah, I think we... I think we have pretty much delivered on uh, what we wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice we could do uh, not only one or two end cars. Now here in Australia, you sell every end car you can get, which I really admire and I appreciate how good our Hyundai Australia team is supporting the end brand and how they are utilizing it to change the whole perception about Hyundai. So I wish all markets were as good as Hyundai Australia using the end cars and uh, yeah, growing a, a fandom, a community of enthusiasts like it is happening here. So I'm very proud uh, to come to Australia and see then how much fun our customers have, how happy they are like on a track day like today. And they're all so thankful that we at Hyundai made this end cars. And I wish uh, all our salespeople in the world could, could listen to these customers here, how happy they are and understand the power of N. Yeah. Will there be a facelift for the i20N? Yes, there will be a facelift. 
there a time frame on that? Uh, it's coming next summer, so we need to wait a little bit. <laughs> but on the technical side, uh, you don't need to be afraid. It's still the crazy corner rascal as it is, so. And lastly, one from me. Are you sick of the flies yet? Oh, this is crazy, <laughs> the flies. I mean, yeah. Uh, no, where do you see N brand in the next five to 10 years? How many models, what sort of lineup are we looking at? Yeah, so it will be very challenging because expanding in the EVs with N uh, depends a lot, of course, on our first N EV. Uh, seeing where we are today with Ionic 5N, I'm quite optimistic to set the first mark. And then expanding like we did with the combustion cars for N, also then expanding from Ionic 5N and then, yeah, hopefully we can go into Ionic 6N and hopefully then sometime later we can go down maybe into C segment or B segment with a very entertaining high performance EV in, in that segment. That's the job we have to do. And I mean, we, we come a long way. We, we knew this time would come some years ago. So we started our developments for N sound, for EVs and virtual shifting already some time ago. And now it's time to bring it to the customers and, and, and show that EVs can be tons of fun to drive. And there's no reason to be sad or, oh, fun is over. No, it's not over. Not for Honda N. We, we can transform the fun into the electrification or hydrogen, whatever. I think we, we have the skills, we have understood what what kind of fun we want to see in our cars, our enthusiasts, what they want to experience with their cars, have them ready for track driving. And so our high performance EVs, uh, they will be able to do that. Maybe we cannot have a stint for like 40 minutes out there, maybe only 20 minutes, but we can be very, very fast and entertaining in those 20 minutes. And then I think at that speed, the driver after 20 minutes also needs a rest. <laughs> Thanks so much, Albert, for your time. We appreciate all your detailed answers. The N enthusiasts are going to love it. You're welcome. <laughs>